Mesdames, mesdames et messieurs, si vous le permettez, nous allons démarrer notre euh, séance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the closing plenary session and it is our pleasure to welcome the president of the General Conference of UNESCO, who will take the floor as the first speaker in this closing session. So without further ado, I give him the floor. President, you have the floor. Excellences, uh, Mr. Ben Moussa. This is Mr. David Chuarena, Director of UNESCO Institute for Long Life Learning. Mr. Daniel Baril, Chair of the Governing Body of the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning. Madame Stefania Giannini, UNESCO Assistant Director for Education that follows us uh, virtually. Ambassador Zaur Alawi, uh, President of the 39th General Conference of UNESCO. And uh, Mrs. Miriam Caldera Sartori, Director of Policies and Guidelines for Basic Education, Ministry of Education of Brazil, in the name of which I welcome and I compliment all the delegations here in this room. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be in Morocco to participate in the seventh conference on adult education. I thank His Majesty King Mohammed VI for the patronage of this important event organized by UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning. And I thank very much, uh, very kindly, the outstanding and cordial reception that we have received here from the authorities of Morocco and the people from Marrakesh, which is fantastic, and I have to, to check that. Adult education, ladies and gentlemen, is a human right that must be respected for the consolidation of sustainable development. It must be at the forefront of all effort across the world to create green, just, and resilient societies, as we cannot achieve social and economic progress without empowering every man and woman with the skills and capacities to operate positive changes. This instructable relationship has already been highlighted in the last edition of Confitea held in Belen, Brazil in 2009. The Belen framework for action raised awareness of global stakes for harnessing the power and the potential of lifelong education for the dignity of every person and open the path for regularly monitoring adult education. Many efforts have been undertaken since, the, since then to promote the vision as an integral part of the 2030 agenda, particularly the Sustainable Development Four of ensuring inclusive and equitably quality education for all. But it is true that a large part of adult and young population across the world continues to be deprived from basic skills needed to fully participate in contemporary workplace and societies. Still, today the world counts at around 780 million illiterate adults. The number of women with low or low, or low literacy skills has hardly changed in the last 20 years, and in some regions, unfortunately, it has even increased. Traditional education has been linked to a set of reading, writing, and counting skills. However, the growing importance of the digital technologies in our daily lives call for new, higher level competencies as a source of dynamism. In the last years, 
we have been confronted with challenging questions about unemployment and job creation, about the response of educa educational institutions to empower learners to succeed in the digital world. The COVID-19 pandemic can be considered a turning point in the, the way that the new technologies and of, of information are influencing how we communicate, learn, and consume, giving rise to a new issues related to lifelong learning. It became clear that we must prepare adults and young people, notably the most vulnerable, for living in these fast-changing societies by, by focusing on technical and vocational education and training and on girls' education corresponding to the needs of the labor market. This is why we need to close the digital divide to bridge the gap between knowledge and lifelong learning. More investment is needed, we know, to train teachers to make the most of digital tools to ensure quality education. The use of new information and communication technologies are indeed connecting individuals and offering opportunities for creating and sharing knowledge. It must be used to support, enrich, and transform education for the better by strengthening literacy, by providing vast possibilities for non-formal and informal education. This is about inclusion and ownership. Every woman and men must be encouraged to embrace learning as lifelong process so they can act not only as user of digital technologies, but as citizens that can shape the world that want to live in. By providing adults with lifelong education opportunities, we equip them with critical thinking skills to make the good choices in a planet under pressure to adopt attitudes and behaviors that allow living together based on a culture of peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now a historic opportunity to put adult and lifelong education at the heart of all post-pandemic recovery strategy, and we must seize it. More than ever, we need to force together our political vision to raise the flag to mobilize for action to help building a better future for millions of women and men. Member states have a huge responsibility to shape inclusive educational policies and anticipate the challenge to come. For a better governance, we must develop solid partnership, bringing multiple, multiple shareholders on board and civil society, the private sector and youth voices. This idea is at the heart of the UNESCO Futures of Education report, launched in the last general conference that calls for a new social contract for education that can repair injustice while transforming the future. This includes the respect of diversity, facilitated access to knowledge, <coughs> and didactic material in mother tongues. This, also one, this is also one of the main elements of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages 2232, a landmark initiative for mobilizing global effort to support the use and reservation, preservation of those languages, including through digital technologies. Based on the force of its mandate, UNESCO holds a unique position to advance education as a common good and make a decisive contribution to the United Nations Common Agenda led by the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres. The forthcoming Transforming Education Summit, which is part of this initiative and whose secretariat is hosted by UNESCO, it's an outstanding opportunity to prioritize global cooperation and investment in education. It is in this spirit that the seventh edition of Confitea comes to a decisive moment, 
some days before the high-level pre-summit to be held at UNESCO headquarters from 28 to 30 June. <clears throat> I truly hope that the recommendation presented here in Marrakesh framework of action will nourish member states' reflection in the conception and implementation of adult education policies in the next years and will have an impact in the discussion of the Transforming Education Summit. Investment in education has frequently been sacrificed in time of crisis. Stronger political will and policies are needed to lever education as a force of life for building a positive future. International solidarity must be our compass to promote initiative to boost ed uh, adult education, especially in the African region, which remains UNESCO global priority. As president of the General Conference, I remain engaged to raise the attention of member states to the need of reinforcing South-South and North-South-South cooperation to, uh, to achieve better results. We must act as with a sense of urgency if we will and we wish to fulfill the 2030 Agenda's promises of leaving no one behind. The debate of these days were extremely prolific, and I would like to congratulate all participants for bringing innovative perspective on issues that are of special relevance for ensuring learning opportunities to all. Thank you very much. Merci, merci beaucoup, monsieur. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President of the uh, General Conference, and thank you very much for those words, which remind us just how very necessary it is to keep working on these new skills uh, and uh, to use IT and digital tools as a lever for reaching the SDGs uh, and uh, so as to ensure true inclusion and going forward. And it's also important to mobilize international cooperation if we are to support the dynamic in this field that each country is aware of. Now, with your leave, we shall now move on to the presentation of the Marrakesh Framework for Action. And I shall be handing over to Mr. Barrel, uh, who is the chair of the governing board of UIL. Um, and he chaired the uh, drafting committee. Uh, but before handing over to him, I just wanted to thank the uh, uh, everybody for their contributions and the proposed amendments uh, that were taken on board uh, when uh, undertaking this uh, work in the drafting committee so as to finally arrive, arrive at, the, uh, at the wording that I think takes into consideration all of the wealth of our debates uh, and encapsulates uh, the key points uh, uh, from our input, uh, contributions, and observations. Um, so now I'll hand over to Mr. Baril. You have the floor, sir. Mr. President of the General Conference, uh, dear ministers, uh, members of, a dele of national delegations, I just wanted to say that the uh, uh, drafting committee arrived at a, uh, uh, at a consensus uh, for a draft, and we submit this to you. We've received some 20-odd uh, uh, proposed amendments from 13 member states, and we tried to encapsulate all of those uh, uh, when working on the final draft. Uh, the uh, text uh, has now integrated all of those proposed changes, uh, and on the upcoming uh, Transforming Education the Summit, uh, we, uh, um, we've uh, made sure that the appropriate changes are made. Uh, the, we feel that, it, uh, um, that the final text uh, uh, 
commits to the way forward, to build on the observations of today. We have taken a clear stance with uh, funding. Um, uh, there were several calls uh, for more uh, commitment to, to uh, ensure the proper and uh, broader funding. Um, and uh, we have made uh, the commitment clear therein. Furthermore, also in the framework of action, the, the principles and uh, priorities that are listed in the annex were included. We felt that this idea actually made the framework of action all the stronger. I was uh, privileged to chair a highly dynamic and high caliber committee. I want to thank all of the members of the drafting committee for all of their meticulous work in a convivial spirit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do think that the Kingdom of Morocco can be proud of this Marrakesh Framework for Action and uh, it'll guide the way for the next uh, 12 years um, and that means that this brings to an end the work of the Drafting Committee. Thank you, sir. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much to the chair of the drafting committee and thank you very much to all of the uh, members of that uh, drafting committee. I know that they worked uh, uh, until very late uh, last night again uh, and uh, part of today in order to finalize uh, the Marrakesh Framework for Action. And I do think that uh, now the text has been uh, disseminated, at least electronically, uh, to the delegates. Um, and uh, now it is submitted to you for approval. If there are no objections, may I take it then that this uh, Framework for Action is ready to be adopted? <laughs> So I do think that your applause uh, makes uh, that rather clear, that you do approve of this Marrakesh Framework for Action. Um, and uh, I think uh, that it will serve as our guide for the uh, uh, current upcoming 12 years, uh, stipulating the main, uh, main axes uh, for uh, work on lifelong learning. And I'm sure it's going to be uh, it's going to find solid support uh, um, everywhere where it, uh, where it is designed to be implemented and so that each and every one of our member states represented here and also uh, those, uh, those uh, collective action initiatives at the international level will be all the more successful for it. So thank you, a big thank you for your commitment there too. I should like then, with your leave, uh, to hand over to our uh, Rapporteur General um, so that uh, we can hear uh, the report uh, of our conference uh, and all of the work undertaken therein. Good afternoon, delegates and all conference participants. I am honored as the General Rapporteur, Rapporteur General to present my oral report of Confintia 7, the seventh international conference on adult education held in Marrakesh, Morocco, from the 15th to 17th of June, 2022, under the high patronage of His Majesty, King Mohammed VI. Representatives from 142 member states and associate member states, including 49 ministers and vice ministers, and over 1,000 participants deliberating on the theme Adult Learning and Education for Sustainable Development, a transformative agenda. We gathered in person in Marrakesh, as you can see from pictures, I hope, and also online, not in pictures. In the opening ceremony, Morocco announced a new African initiative to strengthen South-South coordination and cooperation in the field of adult learning and education and lifelong learning in the form of a proposed African Institute for Lifelong Learning. 
Her Excellency President Saleh works through the, of Ethiopia, Chair of the International Commission on the Futures of Education, called for a new social contract for education that can repair past injustices and shape more just and sustainable futures. These were bold statements which set the tone for Confintia 7. In this report, I will summarize some of the trends, opportunities and challenges, as well as policy measures that we have discussed together over the last three days of this conference. Looking back, we can identify some overarching dimensions which provide a lens for analyzing our exchanges and speak to the moment in which we find ourselves. When the conference started, we were all aware of the shared challenges we face, including widening social inequalities, digitalization, and the climate crisis. These profoundly impact youth and adult learners, as well as the futures of education. In today's context, adult learning and education cannot only be reactive. It has to be transformed in order to transform society through the knowledges, skills and competencies required for citizenship, social justice, employment and sustainability. A new social contract for education must be built on two foundations, two foundational principles. Firstly, education as a common good, and secondly, the right to education throughout life. Indeed, education is a common good that opens the door to other rights. For the common good, democratic and inclusive dialogue with all stakeholders is crucial. And for adult learning and education to be learner-centered, learners, including youth, must participate in shaping it, not only as beneficiaries. We have reflected on expanding the understanding of the right to education and to the right to education throughout life, based on principles of social, environmental and economic justice. In the future, adult learning and education must be more inclusive of different ways of knowing, including indigenous knowledges. In the context of lifelong learning, every individual has a right to adult learning and education. Yet more should be done to ensure that the most vulnerable and disadvantaged are able to exercise their rights. Everyone has the right to pursue adult learning and education without any form of stigma or discouragement. No one should be left behind. Regarding gender equality, there remain huge gaps. Even though educating women is a smart investment with intergenerational benefits, Adult learning and education must take account of gendered relationships between women and men in society. Programs and policies must promote a holistic approach to education for women. Adult learning is instrumental to achieve gender equality, and that is key for inclusive and transformative adult learning and education. Dear delegates and participants, the detailed discussions in plenary and parallel sessions will be available in a written conference report in due course. For now, I will only share a few highlights. Citizenship education for active citizenship has been highlighted as a domain of adult learning and education we need to strengthen, particularly in response to global crisis. It may involve updating our curricula to embed epistemic justice, human rights, critical thinking, democratic values, and other interpersonal values. In the presence of ministers, the fifth global report on adult learning and education, Braille 5, on the theme of citizenship education was launched. Citizenship education teaches respect for differences critical thinking skills and awareness of our shared humanity 
while reinforcing civic engagement. Yet its potential hasn't been realized. Literacy has been recognized as the foundation for lifelong learning, as well as a lever for citizenship education, deemed paramount for adult learning and education in response to global crisis. We must reinvent the role of adult educator and literacy practitioner. We discussed how we can expand notions of literacy, improve governance and policy for literacy, address funding challenges, and strengthen data and research. The labor market is transforming, and this is likely to intensify in the years to come. We need to promote flexible, lifelong learning pathways between education and work, to strengthen technical and vocational education and training, and to address youth and adults' demands for decent work. We found that there is the need to make skills system work across all levels to serve local needs and to provide career guidance. Our discussions also centered on improving systems of data collection and maximizing the possibilities that digi digital training offers, especially for vulnerable groups. Addressing the challenges of digital environments, we looked at the roles of technology in adult learning and education and its potential, as well as concerns about equity and ways to overcome the digital divide and promote digital skills. Attention was also given to international normative instruments that frame access to knowledge and the use of artificial intelligence and connectivity for learning, especially in relation to personalized learning, open educational resources. They can help to foster a culture of lifelong learning. Adult learning <clears throat> and education for climate action was perhaps the most prescient team theme tied to a major global trend. We discussed the capacity for adult learning and education to respond to crises like climate change by fostering resilience. Comprehensive measures and targeted policies <coughs> aimed at reducing youth and adults' vulnerability to climate change as well as exploring ways of fostering skills and knowledge for resilience across societies have been shared. In terms of resilience in the face of other types of crises, adult learning and education can improve and sustain health and well-being, particularly as member states recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. We have also seen how around the world there are some common spaces and spheres conducive to effective implementation of adult learning and education. The learning city has a unique role to play in increasing accessibility to learning opportunities and within learning cities, community involvement is key to sustainable lifelong learning. We heard how community learning centers are key structures for adult learning and education providing a hub and key entry point for quality learning for all age. Through, though their success heavily relies on political will, effective governance and public funding. Libraries are in an ideal position to partner with a wide range of other aid actors. They can and should take a more strategic leadership role to ensure lifelong opportunities for all. The governance of adult learning and education, as for education and lifelong learning as a whole, faces the dual challenge to protect what is of most value and innovation to make progress. There is a need to foster interdisciplinary, intersectoral, interministerial dialogue and ways of working. This is addressed in part by the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning's new publication making lifelong learning a reality, a handbook, which was launched at Confintia 7. It provides guidelines for lifelong learning policy development and implementation in response to major sustainable development issues, including for the achievement of all 17 sustainable development goals, particularly SDG 4. 
if I can capture the essence of our exchanges in a few words, Confintia 7 has underlined the urgency of forging a new social contract for education as the future cannot wait. Adult learning and education as an integral component to the right of education in a lifelong learning perspective is an essential part of this collective public endeavor. Adult learning and education should be situated within the wider context of lifelong learning. Integrated measures are needed to create a holistic system which values learning throughout life and ensures youth and adults are part of the process. We need education and learning for transformative actions today. Confintia 7 is a turning point for expanding perceptions of education in a lifelong perspective. This is the message that we must take forward to political leaders at the highest level. Adult learning and education is an investment in people, planet, and prosperity. It is integral to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and beyond. Our deliberations are directly relevant to the Transforming Education Summit to be convened by the United Nations Secretary General in September this year and the pre-summit to be held in Paris soon from 28th to 30th of June. Through active participation in Confintia 7, as well as the adoption of the Marrakesh framework of action here today, the international adult learning and education community has signaled its desire to make lifelong learning a reality. Thank you. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much to our Rapporteur General for that very thorough report, which I really do think encapsulates the richness of our discussions and uh, also serves to underscore yet again the urgency, uh, urgency of this new social contract for education and for lifelong learning as a, a key component of an investment for the future. We have uh, two more closing statements uh, from the uh, uh, from the host state, and then also from uh, our dear ADG Janini. Uh, uh, before we can uh, close uh, proceedings here of this uh, seventh confindea, so with your leave, um, I should like to present uh, my closing statements uh, in Arabic. In in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, ladies and gentlemen, August Assembly, we've now come to the end of the seventh international conference on adult education and learning held under the high patronage of His Majesty King Mohammed VI. Uh, may God assist him in partnership between the Kingdom of Morocco and the UNESCO. Numerous uh, participants, around 1,200 participants, took part in this conference. They represented 148 countries. A third of them were here in person, and two thirds attended remotely. This conference was preceded by a set of meetings under the guidance of the Kingdom of Morocco, in addition to several conferences held by UNESCO. These conferences included the civil society, the youth, the private sector, and were an opportunity for us to discuss and uh, to bring together our different points of view. It was also an opportunity for us to provide recommendations, some of which were discussed during this conference. This conference included 11 panels, 20 workshops, which enabled us to reach all the outcomes that we are discussing about adult education and learning since the 2009 Belém conference. At the same time, these discussions 
were an opportunity for us to discover future prospects and to identify priorities for action for the upcoming years when it comes to adult learning and education. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kingdom of Morocco was honored to welcome this International Conference on Adult Learning and Education. We hope that this edition has achieved the desired outcomes and that you had a pleasant stay in Morocco. We also hope that we were up to your expectations. This conference was an opportunity to discuss several challenges related to adult education and lifelong learning, such as the promotion of a culture of human rights, citizenship, social justice, common values, sustainable development, artificial development, uh, artificial intelligence, excuse me, education and digitalization. All that has been discussed during this conference so was an opportunity for us to adopt the Marrakesh Framework for Action, which is considered as a roadmap for us to achieve the goals that we've set for the upcoming 12 years in several fields, including drafting a new social contract for adult learning and education, re-examining adult learning and education systems, quality education, improving funding, promoting integration, expanding educational fields, and fostering international cooperation in this field. The Marrakesh Framework for Action was also an opportunity for us uh, uh, to open uh, new horizons, and it is also a chance to accelerate efforts uh, in adult learning and education. It will also contribute to accelerating all the reforms uh, that our country is leading in the field of education and training, which were set out in the letter of His Majesty King, King Mohammed VI to the participants in this conference. So this is a roadmap for us to establish uh, the Institute, African Institute for Lifelong Learning. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, adult learning and lifelong education is everyone's responsibility. For this purpose, we should join efforts and work on raising awareness on the increasing importance of these elements for us to achieve sustainable development and a citizenship fulfillment. I would like to seize this opportunity to reiterate the commitment of the Kingdom of Morocco to the mechanism of cooperation at the national, regional and international levels to keep up with the initiatives that will be launched in order to implement the Marrakesh Framework for Action. To conclude, I cannot but extend my deepest thanks to UNESCO for the support, cooperation, and thanks to all the partners, all the supporters for their participation, involvement, mobilization. Thanks to all the participants at this conference who have contributed through their ideas, their insights, their suggestions, and who have enriched the discussion and contributed to setting out the, the roadmap for the next 12 years on adult education and lifelong learning. I cannot but thank as well the local authorities for their valuable contribution to making this conference a success. Thanks to the teams who have organized this conference. Peace and blessings of God be upon you all. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much to one and all. And now, 
uh, for a final closing address, uh, I should like to hand over to Stefania Giannini, ADG for Education at UNESCO. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to one and all excellencies, uh, honorable delegations, uh, dear participants. Uh, thank you. I uh, having to send my final greetings from my office here in uh, UNESCO, uh, and uh, thank you very much, Minister Ben Musa, and all of the uh, uh, members uh, who, from the organizing uh, authorities in Marrakesh who made this a uh, success. I wanted to, uh, to say that as we arrive at the end of this seventh international conference on uh, ALE, um, uh, I think uh, you've already summed uh, up uh, uh, the importance of the uh, sessions that we held, and I listened very carefully uh, to them. I think that uh, most of the uh, accounts uh, that we've heard have been most enriching. Uh, we've uh, heard the voices of uh, young people, educators, civil society, governments, uh, regional and international organizations, and it's been a truly participatory and inclusive process. Um, and I just wanted to express my congratulations for that. On the conference itself, well, on behalf of UNESCO, I wanted to express my sincere gratitude to uh, His Majesty uh, Mohammed VI, King of Morocco, for having uh, offered his high patronage to this conference. Uh, and uh, for spreading the message, uh, which I think is uh, a very simple and powerful message uh, uh, right from the very outset, uh, the message that was uh, uh, shared through his head of government, uh, illustrating his country's commitment to education and lifelong learning. I also wanted to extend... Uh, Warm thanks uh, to the Kingdom of Morocco for their hospitality, which has been so generous, so exceptional. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Insofar as the content of the conference is concerned, well, we now have the Marrakesh Framework for Action. And this is a framework that will no doubt underpin adult education efforts uh, over the decade to come. I think that this is uh, puts a shared responsibility on our shoulders. It calls for lifelong learning for all adults, as has been mentioned by many speakers. It is a vision that calls for a change, a radical change, a change in paradigm, a real uh, transformation, a cultural transformation. And uh, it is really a question of offering young people and adults all possibilities to improve their lives, to obtain decent work, more than decent, dignified work, and as the minister has said, to become responsible and active citizens. And it is an essential vision as well. There is a, a message here that uh, needs uh, to go beyond uh, efforts uh, to, to, to put in place efforts uh, to combat discrimination, to combat inequality, uh, whatever the level of development of the country. And I think that this conference has also provided us uh, with some interesting uh, data. Uh, let me mention some of that, uh, because I was uh, present when the, the fifth grade report was launched. I mean, uh, brought out uh, good news and bad news. I start from the bad the news. Uh, it's about uh, ringing the alarm on the low uh, participation of the most vulnerable groups. And this is why it's uh, important to put inclusion at the very core of the policies in lifelong learning and other literacy. And uh, I think the, the call uh, uh, for action and the, the, the roadmap are very, very clear on that. The, the, um, the good news uh, is about uh, numbers which uh, testify increasing participation uh, in adult learning and education, including through uh, online modalities. And this is important. This is already 
you know, a result of a process which is running. Uh, I think now we are, uh, as all uh, you mentioned uh, in the section, I had uh, the pleasure and the privilege to, to attend yesterday, we shared the, the, the chilling awareness that uh, humanity is at a kind of turning point. The global health pandemic has hit the most vulnerable, has actually revealed our fragility. And to cope with this change and to manage this disruption, uh, uh, I think uh, it's about the change, it's about the transformation, and go a bit later on that, but it's about very much also um, prioritizing all the learning and education uh, as, a, as a kind of mainstream uh, a policy uh, in, uh, and investment uh, in education and in other policies around education. Uh, it has to become a more inclusive, as you said, a better finance and more responsive to contemporary challenges. And the Marrakesh Frame for Action makes a very strong commitment on all these fronts. Uh, I, I would like to highlight a few key features I see very much important just uh, to, to, to recall the headlines. Uh, first, promoting inclusion, as already mentioned, uh, paradoxically, it entails uh, a place in uh, diversity, including linguistic diversity uh, at the heart of our endeavors. Uh, and it's about motivating learners better, more, and meeting their needs, their expectation, and design programs that are very much relevant for them and can empower them. Education, especially adult education, but education broadly speaking is about the freedom. And this is very important. It's kind of part of the message that we have to repeat um, constantly. Second point, it's about the promotion of flexibility, innovation, and relevance in learning programs and learning spaces. There is very much to do still on that from uh, the workplace to community learning centers, from schools to training centers and universities, from libraries uh, to sports and cultural institutions. I mean, it's, it's the time to rethink uh, how uh, we learn, how we, we, we teach, when and in which kind of learning environment. I think that the transformation we are very much talking and acting about this year is focusing on this part. And it's also the, the, the time to open doors for youth and adults rather than closing them off as uh, some not inclusive program actually did in the past. We have some good example, the UNESCO Global Network Cities uh, or Learning Cities, for example, has demonstrated a, a key initiative on the ground and a practical approach to provide more and better learning opportunities for all. Third point, uh, the role of technology. I mean, uh, there is no future without leveraging the power of technology. There is no future without, uh, in education as many other sectors, without putting technology at the service of the humanity, the learners, the teachers, the community, and not the other way around. And I think this framework commits to identifying ways to reduce the digital gap, to expand digital literacy, skills to promote open educational resources, building, building very much on UNESCO normative instruments. I wish to recall the Open Science Declaration, the AI resolution, and these are really very much new uh, international treaty, which can uh, which can give uh, uh, the right uh, the right frameworks to work within. In other words, uh, your excellencies, dear uh, participants, it's about shifting uh, a paradigm from uh, a subject-oriented approach to a learning to learn approach. And uh, we know it's not easy. We know it's about uh, making a big change, a big uh, a big uh, transformation. And this brings me to the two small, uh, uh, important, uh, from my perspective, UNESCO perspective, at least points, and we, I wish to, to, to highlight in conclusion. One is about the global agenda we have this year. Um, the President of General Conference, uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Santiago uh, Murao just mentioned clearly, Transforming Education Summit is not a simple initiative for us, uh, uh, a, a, a one-on event for us is really a, a, a process. Uh, and uh, we want to start it from Paris in a few days uh, to bring the message from Marrakesh about all the key messages that we, we summarized in this uh, closing session. So we kindly 
uh, invite all of you and uh, warmly invite to, to, to make uh, your voice loud and clear about uh, these points. We don't have so much time from now to 2030. It's about uh, eight years. So we, are, we know we are not on track. We are not yet on track before the pandemic. And now uh, I think uh, it's really very much uh, the, the turning point uh, now or never to, to make uh, a clear message uh, to, to, to bring uh, education uh, at the very core of sustainable development agenda. We have uh, the opportunity. The second and last point is about the regional dimension. Uh, in his opening message, uh, His Majesty uh, Mohammed VI described this country's active commitment to quality education and lifelong learning as the kind of bedrock of a new development model. model. And uh, Minister Ben Moussa uh, uh, and the Minister uh, Mouaki uh, actually explain their own policies uh, in education and higher education, as well as technical and vocational training. Uh, I think it's not by chance that this confinté is taking place uh, in the region, it's taking place in Morocco. We welcome very much the King of, of Morocco's initiative to launch uh, a dematerialized African Institute uh, for Lifelong Learning, and uh, we see the, 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 this is the right way to go, uh, bringing from the global to the regional and uh, country level perspective, uh, all the commitment, all the common vision, and all the passion that uh, I, I actually uh, was feeling uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, my two days uh, in Marrakesh with all of you. And uh, I want really to, to warmly thank you for your commitment. And once again, uh, see you very soon uh, in Paris. We have already some 100 and more ministers uh, registered uh, and uh, you know, many, many, many young people uh, and uh, other stakeholders coming uh, to commit to education. Thank you very much, uh, Monsieur le, le Ministre. Je vous redonne la parole. I, I see the, the floor to you, Minister. Well, with that, with that strong message from the ATG that gives us a perspective of the Marrakesh framework for action, we can now roll up our sleeves and get down to the implementation of the Marrakesh framework for action. And so with that, I declare this seventh Confintea closed, thanking all participants for having attended, for having contributed, and wishing you bon voyage to your respective homes and expressing the hope that you will enjoy the rest of your stay in this city.